On today's episode of Moto Chase. I realized I never showed you guys how I attached my Harbor Free bag to my rack. So that actually worked out pretty good. That's on there pretty, pretty, pretty good. Definitely not going to come off unless unless these come loose, but I doubt it. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. Yeah, you better ride before it gets too cold, huh? So this is the Orion RXB CB motor. This is the first time I've ever seen one, you know. There's a cult following of those things, you know. Will that KTM plastic fit a KTM? Everything. Everything? Oh my god. Now the new one coming out, the one I spec'd with uh, Jason, is a uh, 2.6 gallon. This is 1.96 gallon. That'd be nice. 1.9. Just enough to piss you off. Yep. Definitely better rear shock. And the front, you said it has two dampenings adjustments? Yeah, it's got compression and rebound. Oh, it does. Oh, yeah, I see down the bottom. Oh, yeah. You got another one down here, and you got and I, behind the hole. Yeah, I saw that. And this comes, how many horsepower, you said? Uh, it's supposed to be 20 or 21? Rated at 20-ish. Depends on whose dyno chart you look at. But... After riding my whole life, see the pants tells me it's 22. And I think that's because it's got a nibby, not a Makuni. And that flows much better. And also, I, I cleaned up the exhaust port. How do you like the nibby? I've, t I've had the nibbies and I've had the Okos, and I kind of almost like the Okos for the price. Um, I put a nibby on my wife's 150. I bolted it on, quarter turn on the air screw, quarter turn on the uh, idle, read the plug after about 10 minutes. I've never touched it since. Nice this and done nothing but i jetted up to uh 135 and uh went to a 42 pilot just because i don't like pulling. you're running 135 in that how big it, you got it's a 30. 128 and i went to a 135. it came with a 128? yeah wow but also it was um it's supposed to have a cat in it this didn't come this is a stainless steel no cat i took the guard off i've got to rewrap it i just got tired of the vibration I gasket matched the exhaust. I cleaned the head up a little bit. Just some of the rough casting. I didn't do a full porting. <laughs> Did the same on the intake. And that brought me from a uh, 132.5 jet to a 140. It started flowing a lot better. Other than that, I just dropped one tooth in the front and dropped to a 38 in the rear. I'm probably going to jump one tooth because it'll do over 70, about 75. I can cruise at 60. Really? With the other gearing. But off-road, it's not that it doesn't have enough torque. I want to be able to chug at a lower speed and <laughs> there was a little more clutch work and i was noticing clutch fade because i had to beat the clutch right you know what time it is <laughs> now these are upside down so oh all right the pet cock. I like that kickstand up there. I ground the shit out of it and fully redo. It used to be down halfway, so I ground the stop off. I weld a little nubbin in there so the spring could tuck in KTM style. Nice. Want me to lead? Yeah, there's like a pond up there.
You're not gonna like the suspension on this now. Oh no, I bottomed that out. I'm, I'm 250 pounds. Is it neutral? Oh, it's front. You gotta hit it. Pick a brake. Pick one of them. Oh, it's got the safety. pretty good. It's geared low. I thought this looped around. Snappy. It's definitely more dirt bike than a hawk. Oh yeah. But it's definitely less civilized. Not... Try to fuel inject it. It's not it's a little different. The suspension's different. Yeah, I've Vinny's. He didn't have fuel injected though. I know. I wish I could air down a little more. Do you have remorse? No. I have like twelve pounds in there. These are my factory tires. I've got a new set of 10, the Trackmaster rear. And the I looked this one up. That's a pricey tire. Yeah, it was, what was it, $160 for that. I buy I buy $49 tires, the, Ken, the, the Trackmaster I have at home. Oh, I had Kenda. I, I bought that for my um, CRF 250. Yeah, it's a Trackmaster 2. It has, it has cleats on it, yeah. And then three small blocks. That's it. And then I didn't like the way they were on the road. They wore shitty. That's really good. You gotta take a little rip on it. You can definitely feel that that's geared lower though. That's uh, 1745. It's geared so high, you're not gonna like it. I don't rip through the trails like what we're doing now. I barely rip like that. I go fast enough where I don't wash out in the sand and that's about it. Romp it a little. What's that? Romp it a little to feel it. You can beat it. I blow through that travel pretty quick. It likes mid-range. It doesn't like the my grunty bottom end style. I mean, compared to the carbureted Hawk, it's a little better for sure, but. Yeah, the transmission is not as forgiving. I don't, I'm not a clutch person. Clutch in first gear and then I just. Well, it's got, look at the difference in the shifter length. That's uh, got a long shifter. That's like a little short shift and that thing, I mean, that's like a long. And it's all, everything's stock on it. I mean, it's totally stock. That is, reminds me of my first legal dual sport, 86 SP200. I liked having a, a fatter seat, but I wish they would have went straighter. It's very comfortable. That oh. is a great exploring, putting around dual. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> this is like my stock DRZ, my stock CRF 250, well, come with that. Why you were sitting so much, because it's comfortable. 
Yeah. You don't have to. I stand because I just stand all the time. I mean, I'm just. Oh. The thing is, like, the, where the foot pegs are, feel uncomfortable for me to stand too much. Did uh, you try standing on it? Yeah. It, they feel like it's too far forward. See where the foot peg, your foot pegs are? Your back, I'm on like, two-thirds of the, between the two tires. Yeah. You look at that, it's dead center. So it's almost like when you stand up, you got to stand up over the tank. Yeah. It's not really a great, it's more of a sit-down bike. For cruising, just trail riding. General, right. You can't beat it for that. Yeah, that thing's, I mean, it's got nice low-end, it's got a good brap to it. Yeah. And it's set up like the foot pegs are nice because when you stand up, you're in a comfortable position. It's not like you're over the tank. And it feels balanced. Like, the suspension on that is much nicer than that. It's much stiffer, and it's got a lot longer travel. If I had to go from here to, to uh, Gainesville, I, I'd jump on the Hawk all day long. All right. If I wanted to go up and explore Ocala and putt around, I'd jump on that all day long. If I to Just for putting around, right? Yeah. That's a ripper, and that's a putter. <laughs> now, the next version of this will be a little more, that sixth gear will be like kind of a hybrid, where I can still have my low-end grunty off-road gear. Something for the highway, yeah. Because you know? this thing redlines at 10.5. Uh, now with that rev box and see now if they go to that you're not going to be able to go 10.5 because of the push rod engine yeah i mean you're not going to get it's going to be a torquey motor i don't know how they're going to cam it i mean there's only one lobe cam in there well joe henner ports and polishes and he says he's getting 30 horsepower out of it but out of that yeah but he's making a time bomb yeah i was going to say there's more options for that with the overhead cam than there is for that they there's big board kits for this and everything Joe Henner, though, they were saying, oh, no, no, you can't modify this. We're trying to keep people from buying them. Why I, would you go with a push rod motor when you can go with an overhead cam motor? Are you missing an engine bolt? Oh, another one fell out? Yeah, that, that, that's a China thing. Look at it every couple rides. I usually listen for vibrations. And tear oh, yeah, that's when you can tell, yeah. So if I've got a weird noise, something's coming loose. Exactly. But, again, I don't have a counterbalancer, and I, I ride it pretty hard. Now, the one that they're going to do, is it the one... That's like on a Braz, a counterbalance CG engine? Yes. So okay. Counterbalance. Well, let's go uh, rip around a little bit. Oh, I never do that. If you follow this all the way, that's where my son drove my Jeep in first and almost buried it. It comes out to a big hole, so we'll check it out. Oh man. Yeah, probably not a good idea. I feel like I'm up north.
Oh, my chain must be loose. My chain must be loose. My chain must be really loose. I can hear it snapping under acceleration. Yep, that's where he was. He came from that way and went right in there. That's about four feet deep. I should have thought of checking that chain. <laughs> Put like over a thousand miles. Like someone else had the same idea. This one to higher gearing isn't so good. The chain's really slapping. <laughs> Just like home, trail blazing. with that rear tire. I wonder if that's a rim or the tire. It's a rim. Looks like your rim's out a little bit. 
Oh yeah, they're very thin. Yeah, I'm not a, much a fan of mud either. I don't have a problem with the sand too much it's, unless you catch the wrong line and then I'll do that little whoop. It's easy to say, but throttle fixes everything you see. Well, yeah, because if you try to slow down, it just plows. It's worse. It, it amplifies it quickly. Yeah, I, when I was riding yesterday, I think I even said it on that. I was like, you got to get your sugar legs. You got to get to know how fast you can go, where you feel safe that you're not going to wash out. And not fight the bars. And just kind of, yeah, let the bike go where it wants to go. And the more you ride in sand, the more you'll feel more comfortable going fast. So what do I think of the RBX 250L? I like it. Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hit that bell if you want new notifications on new videos. Links for products used are in the description and on MotoCheese.com. Thanks for watching.